Good evening to those of you that are join me, joining me on this uh, first teaching. I'm, I'm ple pleased. I'm, I'm asking you for your input, your any questions that you have. I, I will stop in the midst of whatever I am doing as I'm teaching to to answer your questions because teaching is 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 a very important part of uh, any ministry, any pastor's <laughs> pastor's ministry. Stop it! <laughs> oh, I love me some Lorando. You, you just had to go there. <laughs> uh, and we're we're going to be getting into a lot of things that are said that are not in the Bible, but it sounds good. And and we want to correct some statements, even even preachers, you uh, including myself. Uh, I was repetitive of things that I heard as a child growing up and it carried on into my own ministry. But after reading, uh, I had to correct some things. And I'm, I'm hoping that you other pastors will be humble enough to admit when you're wrong. And uh, I have a close friend watching me right now that I pastored from the time she was a child. And she babysitted my two grown children. They're now 35 and 39, respectively. And uh, she is very versed in Scripture, so I've got to be on my P's, Q's, R, S, T, and everything else. Sister Foss, it's always good to see you. You've been so faithful, and I thank you for for being with me uh, on this first of a series of teaching because there are Scriptures that we've just, we've got to deal with it. We've got to correct some things that have been said that uh, even though they sound good, it's not sound doctrine. Pray with me. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ. I come before you thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity to share your word. And Father, even though I'm constantly asking you to forgive me because this flesh cannot remember everything that is done and some sometimes there are sins of omission as well as commission and, and I just want to be upright in your sight and father let none of us in this in these studies be in self Look, let let no never let any of this flesh be on parade but help us to rightly divide the word of truth and never lean to our own understanding and as always, I say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. As a 74-year-old preacher and 50-plus in, in the ministry, I was called to preach in 1968 and. Uh, I began to realize those, that's a lot of years, <laughs> a lot of years. I've reached a point where I see that we're living in a time when the voice of the church has been silenced. At the same time, the voices of wrong have been lifted up with deafening clarity. The courts <laughs> have declared wrong to be right and right to be wrong and even the church sad to say is is at the mercy of some of the rulings and it takes a a righteous person to really stand up against the evils of this day and this is not something that the faint of heart need to do because it doesn't come without retribution because even as Christians, those that are called, 
there are consequences for good actions <laughs> as well as the bad. But the Bible declares that no one in the flesh can please God. But one of the things that I want to look at is uh, James. James, the fifth chapter, the 14th through 16th, 16th verse, because we have been doing things off the cuff, as, as, as uh, I want to say. I, 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 I've got to have big print. Let me, yep. Got to have this big print. Uh, go with me to James, the fifth chapter. And I'm going slowly tonight, which is, that's, that's, that's a stretch for me. Because uh, LaRonda knows I talk fast. And as my queen let me know before, way before her passing, that folk ain't in my head like that. And. And uh, I want you, I want to bring things. I want to show you the simplicity of the gospel. Uh, matter of fact, let's let's start with the fourteenth verse in James. As a matter of fact, let's start with the thirteenth verse. What do we do? What What am I supposed to do when I am afflicted? What do you do when you are afflicted? Well, the thirteenth verse says. Let you pray. Let you pray. And when you're merry, when you're happy, when you're happy, what do you do? You sing psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, the, you sing psalms. Now that was afflicted. That was afflicted. What about the sick? What about the sick? Is any sick among you? He didn't tell you to call Facebook. Hey, Don, I was hoping you you sign in. I look for you, spoil me. Is any sick among you? What do you do? Call Facebook? Have have everybody in prayer uh, prayer warriors, which I have yet to. Discover what that is, because I've, I've I've never never seen that. But uh, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them do what. Pray over, over him. You see that verse fourteen, and in praying over him, what what does it tell him to do? anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You pray over him, which means either you're about as tall as Shaq or either they are kneeling where you can pray over them and anoint, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Nothing is said about the laying on of hands. You don't touch that individual. Let's go let's go back and, and look at this oil issue. Because I've seen folk just slapping oil on your head and 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 you and uh, I ain't that safe, don't slap too hard. Uh oil is poured where? It's poured. It's poured. Go to Exodus 29 and 7. I'm, I'm turning with you purposely so that I won't get too far ahead. Exodus. What did I say? 29 and 7. Now, this anointing started in the Old Testament. They had a special oil. It's called the anointed oil. And what does verse 7 say? Thou shalt take the anointing oil and do what? Pour it. Pour it upon his head and anoint him. His head 
You can't pour anything on the forehead. It's the head. The head that you pour the oil upon him. Are you still with me? Now, why? Because it represents the Holy Spirit. You do not pour it on the flesh. It never touches the flesh. While you're in Exodus, uh, let's go to the uh, the thirtieth chapter and the thirty-second verse. I'll wait. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Oh Lord, I wish I upon man's flesh it shall not be poured. Which means you do not pour dip that oil as, as folk have been doing on your fingertips, which is flesh, nor put the oil on the forehead. It's flesh. Is that not what it says? Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Why are we getting slap happy with the bottle of oil? Because the anointing is not the bottle, but what's inside the bottle. And once it touches your flesh, you have contaminated it. Hey, Nadine. You have contaminated what represents the Holy Spirit, which is not supposed to touch the flesh. Why? That why why should it not touch the flesh? We'll go to Acts 2, 17 and 18. The flesh is reserved for something else. It's, it's reserved for something else. Acts 2. Look at verse 17 and 18. Now, why is this so important? Because when, when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, he was preaching prophecy concerning the last days. Because the first thing that he, uh, that he says in verse uh Verse 16, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days. He was talking about the last days, says God. What's, he, what's, what's God going to do concerning the flesh? I will pour, this represents the Holy Spirit inside the bottle, but he's going to pour out of his spirit upon what? He's going to pour out of, out of, not his spirit. He's not going to pour his spirit. He's going to pour out of his spirit. When we pour out of the bottle upon the head, we don't pour the whole bottle, but we pour out of the bottle. Well, he's going to pour out of his spirit on what? Upon all flesh. You don't tamper with what God has reserved for something else later on. That's why the anointing of the oil is on the head. Because when he pour out of his spirit upon all flesh, that's, uh, that's during the 1,000 year reign of Christ. The Holy Spirit will be upon every individual. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. If, and I told you it, to, that word prophesy comes from Revelation 19 and 10 said, said, said the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. They are going to talk about Jesus Christ, the same man that they rejected. 
they're finally going to say, they're, they're finally going to have his testimony. They shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And, and what about what about his servants and handmaids? What about his servants and, and handmaidens in verse 18? And on my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of, of my spirit. And what should they do? They should prophesy. Because when Jesus came to, <laughs> to earth, he came for the Jews. He came unto his own. Jesus was of the scattered tribe of Judah himself. He came unto his own scattered tribe. Did they receive him? No. But as many as did receive him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. That, that's what we are right now. Right now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But what happens when he appears? But when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. But the important thing I want us to realize is that some of the stuff we're doing in our churches is not according to scripture. The flesh is not touched by the oil, inclusive of your hand, nor your forehead. The flesh is, can, is not to be touched by the oil. This oil represents the Holy Spirit that, that's going to be upon all flesh. is reserved for that. But where is the anointing? On the head, like, like it was with Aaron. They anointed his head and it went all the way down his beard to the robe from the head down. So the so so his when you anoint the head, you are anointing the whole body. Head down. Now, let's go back to James. Because that prayer is not, and I, and I say is not, for your healing. It says nothing about you being healed by that prayer. Let's go back. James 5. What does the prayer of faith do in verse 15? What does the prayer of faith do? What is the... When y'all making all these altar calls, it's not for the it's not for the sick to be healed. It's for them to be saved. The only altar calls you should be making are is for those that want to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. I had to move around. There you go. I was moving around trying to. Because you know, you know he's going to do this every, every time that uh, I come on. Y'all should be used to it by now. But what does the prayer of faith do? Saves the sick. You got to... Instead of these praise leaders, praise teams, how about some praise pastors, praise elders that have a prayer of faith anointing with all that the sick might be saved. It's talking about sin sickness. I didn't write this. Verse 15, the prayer of faith shall do what? Save the sick. And what does the Lord do? Raise him up. Raise him up from his sins. Because it says, if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Would you tell me why you're doing all this laying on of hands, it has nothing to do with this scripture. Matter of fact, you don't see, see any hands mentioned. Now, what about what about when folk are, folk are sick? Okay, I'm glad you asked. What does that next verse say? You ain't gonna like this one. Do you, do you, do you want to, to get well? 
Confess your faults. Ooh, ooh. But pick the folk you confess your faults to because some folk are just as nosy as they can be. They'll put your business on out there. Confess your faults one to another. One on one. I pick my folk. I pick my folk. Some of you didn't know I was going through sickness. The tide decided, okay, let me confess. Let me confess my fault. But I ain't going to tell you what the deal is. Because folk are too nosy. I be, y'all, y'all have me in the grave. But it's a sickness not unto death. So, and once you confess your faults one to another, what else should you be doing? Pray. For one another. That you might be what? That you might be what? Hey grandchildren. Don't call me right now. I, I hung up on you. Pray for one another. That you might be healed. The healing takes place. When we are praying. One for another. No all involved because the, the anointing was with all. You're praying over them, anointing when the name of the Lord to help folk get their sins forgiven. Let to see you, Miss Cindy. And I told y'all, and I, I mean this in my heart, I don't want everybody praying for me. If you're not right, leave me alone. Don't put your mouth on me. Because the very next verse at the end of, of, uh, of verse 16, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Get yourself right with God, then pray for me. But if you know you're crooked, keep on being crooked. Go on, go on. pray for yourself till you get uncrooked. And then you can pray for me. The effectual, fervent prayer of of the righteous. And it's not your righteousness. What God sees. Once we submit our lives to him. Is none other than the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We have no righteousness. We have his imputed righteousness. Are you still with me? So. The, the prayer for the sick. It's for them to be saved and get forgiveness. That's the purpose of the anointing with the oil. And verse 16 is for the healing. Open your mouth and confess. Confess. Some of the stuff I'm going through is because of the sin from that 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 uh, from that uh, in chapter 15 wasn't that wasn't forgiven. So what do I do? I have to confess. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that veil as much. Ain't, ain't no such thing as prayer warriors. Prayer chains. It don't take but one link on the chain to break and, the, and everything breaks. Get you one individual. Sometimes two that, that you know are right with God. To pray for you and with you. Not everybody. Now, and let me tell you something, even with all the prayers, healing is not always available. But there's not always a lack of faith. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4 and 20. Don't you think Paul had, uh, was anointed to, you know, to, to uh, you know, many folk were healed, through Paul, were they not? What happened when Timothy got sick in Second uh, Timothy four and twenty? Paul didn't lay hands on him. Paul didn't give him a handkerchief, and you you'll find things about that handkerchief in Acts the nineteenth chapter and verses uh, eleven and twelve, and I, I I'll bring it up to you in a minute. But 2 Timothy 4 and 20. 
he had somebody with him named Trophimus. In verse 20, what happened to Trophimus? What did Paul do? Powerful Paul, anointed Paul, sometimes with the gift of healing Paul. He left him at Miletum sick. You're not going to immediately get well all the time. He left him there sick. Well, well, what happened when Timothy got sick? I'm glad you asked. Look at 1 Timothy, the uh, fifth chapter, I believe. Yep, 1 Timothy 5 and 23. Timothy's stomach was all messed up. Dysentery, the water was bad. So you, you would think that Paul would, would do like Moses just and, and, and Elijah, just do something to the water. But what he... What did he uh, tell Timothy in the 23rd verse? Don't drink any more water. Don't y'all go overboard with this one, okay? But use a little wine for your stomach's sake. And your often infirmities. He had sicknesses often. So Paul was saying, use common sense. You folks use common sense. Don't come to church wanting the pastor to pray for your headache when you've got Tylenol in the cabinet, which is one of the gifts of healing. There's no such thing, no such thing as the gift of healing. But according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, it's a plurality. There are gifts of healings. The doctor is one of the gifts. The nurse is one of the gifts. The, 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 uh, the injections are one of the gifts. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes the, the healing is progressive, not immediate. So, so what does he tell them to do? Use common sense. Use what is available for your healing because you're not going to always be able to get to somebody to pray for you. I don't see no... Nothing happened out there, so I, so I guess you're understanding me. There are gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. Now, <laughs> and why do I hear this constantly? You don't get on my last nerve, you're on my reserve nerve. Once you get your little healing. You say, by his stripes I am healed. Oh, please. Turn, turn to Isaiah 53, and the 53rd chapter. I, I, I was going to say just the fifth verse, but the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Because folk would take one scripture and just run. Just run with it. And, and have them... That's like taking medicine and not reading how to take it. This particular scripture in Isaiah is about the sin-bearing servant. About being despised and rejected of men. Already done before he did it. He's borne our griefs. What else did, had it already carried before he carried? He carried our sorrows. And we did esteem him strict, stricken, smitten of God. But why, was, why did all this take place? He was wounded. I'm going outside. Why was he wounded? For what? Why was he wounded? Ain't none of you said nothing. I told y'all to talk back to me on the screen. Why was he wounded? For our transgressions. Why was he bruised before he was bruised? For our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace 
was upon him. But look what happened. It, go, it goes from the past to the present. And, and with his stripes, what are we? We're healed of our sins. The sins are cast in the sea. He was talking what had already happened in the past that would that that would happen once he went to the cross. Now, now go to First Peter. I'm gonna have to go back inside. I don't like this chill, but 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 I'm not gonna let the devil defeat me. I think it's First Peter two and twenty four. So I don't have my notes. I'm I'm relying on <laughs> glazy fish fish. I've got to hold this and with one hand and turn the scripture with the other. So I'm hoping I'm correct in First Peter. Yep. Let's 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 start with the twenty second verse. What he do? He didn't sin. There was no gal found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he what reviled not again. When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but committed himself to to what? Him that judges righteously, righteously, which is God, the Father Himself. Now, what is he bearing in his own body on the tree? Our sins. Our sins. That we being dead to sin should live righteously, live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Were healed all the way in the past, all the way, all the way back to Isaiah. Before it happened, it was already done. I'm going back in the house. I'm getting cold. Before he did it, it was done. Not, had nothing to do with the with the uh, <laughs> with health, except the sin health. That scripture by his stripes, I'm healed, has to do with sin. Can you hear me now? I guess I have to go back outside. Help me out, Randy. I'm, I, I see somebody. So, somebody's talking back at me. You, you see what's on the screen? This young man used, used to be my musician at Zion Hill Baptist Church in the 80s. So evidently I did something right, LeBron. He's he's still showing up. <laughs> so you see the difference between what has has been coming out of our mouths that has nothing to do with with what really is. That's the reason folk are not healed. You can't put a band aid on cancer. You you've got to deal with the issue with something that works. And, okay, do you know that he was a curse? Do you know that he was a curse? Go to a, mm, John, John 12. I'm sorry I don't have things together, but I had to, had to hold the book in one hand and the phone in the other. So, y'all pray with me. I trust y'all. <laughs> okay. Have you ever noticed John 12? And look at verse 32. I think it's 32. Yeah. We will sing this. How to reach the masses. Men of every birth for an answer. Jesus gave the key. That if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. That happened already. Because it happened after he judged this world. 
in, in, in verse 31. And he said, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Because that's what he came to do. And what did he say? And if I be lifted up from the earth, it won't just be these 12 that end up with the 11 and plus the 70. It won't just be them, but I will draw all men unto me, signifying what death he would die. And he said the Son of Man must be lifted up. He must be lifted up. Okay, he was lifted up, but what was he lifted up on? And I want y'all, I want y'all to read uh, when we get off. I want y'all to read uh, all the way, all the way down uh, to at, at least finish the forty one, forty first verse, because I, I said all that to get you to go to Galatians, the third chapter. I'm going to give you time because I, I need time to. I can't move as fast as I used to. But that's a good thing for y'all. Do y'all realize that as Jesus walked this earth, he was to become a curse He represented sin. He became the sin bearer. Anything that touches you, you become a part of it because you're carrying it. He carried sin. Now, what does Galatians 3? Are you with me? Galatians 3. And go with me to verse 10 and we're going to read. We're going to read to I want to stop. For as many as of, of the works of the law are under the curse. Jesus was born under the law. Grace did not come to, to Jesus sent the Holy Spirit on the 50th day, which we call Pentecost. He was born under the law and he died under the law. Grace did not happen until Jesus ascended on high. So, so let, let me go back. What, what verse was I on? Uh, verse 10. Was, was, I, was I on 10? Y'all better help me out. I done told y'all I'm old now. For many as are, as are of the folks of the law, which we, we were under, he came, are under what? The curse. The curse. For it is written. And anytime you see that word it is written, please go and find out what was written. He's talking about Deuteronomy 27 and 26 and Jeremiah 11 and 3. Curse is everyone. Everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. They couldn't do it. So everybody was cursed till Jesus came. He became a curse for us, for that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. So what happened? The just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. So these folks that are quoting the law and everything, don't want to live under grace, they've got to live by everything that's written in the law. But what did Christ do? Please, 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 what did God do in verse 13? What did Christ do? You know what redemption is? Redemption is when you buy back something that somebody else had. If somebody bought bought my land because I couldn't afford it. Okay, it's, if someone had enough money, they could go and redeem that land. they buy it back from, from that second owner. Okay, we were under the curse of the law.
But what has Christ done in verse 13? He has redeemed us from what? The curse of the law. How did he do it? Because what was he made? I told you he was walking around. He was a curse walking around. Being, being made a curse. Being made a, a curse. For who? For us. If he hadn't done it, <laughs> we wouldn't live too long because it wouldn't take much for us to mess up according to the law. For, now hear, hear the word. Hear, hear the word. For it is written. Where is it written? In Deuteronomy 21 and 23, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. There were three curses on the hill called Calvary. Remember, those thieves on each side, they were cursed. And the one in the middle that done no sin, he was a curse too. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive what? The spirit, the, the promise of the spirit through faith. If he hadn't done what he did, the Holy Spirit would not have come. We would still be under the law, waiting for the Messiah to come. We would be just like those those Jews, where they he came unto his own, and what they do, they didn't receive him. Still waiting for the Messiah. But he has already done all he's going to do. He's not going back to the cross. We are no longer under the law. He became a curse for us. Now here's, here's one that I know is going to get you go. We're the head, not the tail. We're the lender, not the borrower. Oh my God. Please go to Deuteronomy 28. was he talking to when he said that not one Gentile, not one. Moses was pronouncing blessings and cursings upon, upon no one but Israel itself. And who, what, what did God say about Israel? I'm glad you asked. Look at 28 and 1. It shall come to pass if thou Israel, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, commandments which I command thee this day. What did the Lord say about Israel that he would do? That the Lord thy God will set Israel on high above all nations on the earth. Israel. Israel. Now. Uh, how do I do this? The Lord plum promised to. Bless Israel. Israel. Uh, go, uh, go back to the. Uh, 15th chapter. And, but, but keep your hand. Keep, keep, keep your hand on, on uh, chapter 28. The 15th chapter. Let's look at the 6th verse. For the, for the Lord thy God bless thee as he has promised thee. Not y'all. Thee, Israel. What would Israel do? Because we don't we don't put this part. We, we we'll say we're the lender, not the borrower. Okay. He's talking about Israel. How many nations do you lend to? If you're the lender and not the borrower, how did you buy your house, your car? How are you paying off student loans? 
Did you, you get what I just said? It's not about you. It's about Israel. And they shall lend to many nations and shall not borrow. And what else are they going to do? They're going to reign over many nations. But no nation is going to reign, reign over them. It's not talking about you. And what about the people that they lend to? The, we're talking about the brothers and sisters. Well, look at the very first verse. At the end of every seven years, the debt, if I borrowed a million dollars from you, and at the end of the seven years, I could just pay back $200,000 out of a million dollars, the debt is cleared. No charge. Because at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And what is that release? Look at the second verse. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth anything unto his neighbor shall release it. Don't know. You shall not exact it to his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. At the end of every seven years, the debt is clear whether you have paid it or not. So you still want to be the lender not to borrow? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. How about loan me about $3 million? I pay. I, I, I try to pay you back within seven years. Now, huh. Go back to, to chapter 28. Remember, he's talking to no one but Israel. What's the Lord going to do to Israel's enemies in, in verse 7? They'll be smitten before Israel's face. And that's going to happen during the tribulation period. They shall come out against thee in one way and flee in seven ways. They're going to be scattered. Let the enemies be scattered. I know you've seen that song. And the Lord's going to command blessing upon Israel and the storehouses and in everything they set their hand to do. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord God giveth thee. The land belongs to Israel, not you. Oh, well, maybe me because I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm of the tribe of Judah. I'm one of the scattered ones. We didn't just happen, but uh, that's another story. And what does he say about Israel in verse 9? The Lord shall establish thee a holy, which means set apart, a sanctified people unto himself. Is that not what it says? And what does he say in verse 10? And all people of the earth shall see that Israel, Israel, El means God, are called by the name of the Lord, and they should be afraid of thee. That will happen during the tribulation period. I'm teaching Revelation on Sunday night. We'll get to it. Now, what does he say about Israel? In verse 13, then we're going to on to something else. The Lord shall make Israel the head and not the tail. Shall make Israel above only and not beneath. If they listen to the Lord and obey him. It's not about you. It's not about you. You cannot take what God has given to Israel Israel is called the apple of his eye. Israel is loved by God. They're one of the, they, they're right in the Jerusalem, right in the center of the of the of the of the, of the universe. But we have taken we have taken scripture and misapplied it. I got a good one. I got a good one. Here we go. Can we really call those things that be not as though they were? No. Let's go to Romans 4 and 17 because folk just read what they want to read and that they don't read what was said in front of it. 
Romans 4 and 17. Now we speak those things as not as though they were. No, we can't. Ain't going to happen. Let's read the whole thing in Romans 4 and 17. As it is written. There you go again. Where is it written? Oh, in Genesis 17 and 5. I have made thee. Thee who? Abraham. I have made thee a father of many nations. Wait a minute, you ain't even got no babies. But I have made you a daddy of many nations. Before him whom he believed. The part we read is that we call those things which are not as though they were. But before that statement is made, it says, even God who does what? Quicken the dead. I ain't seen you raise, raise nothing up. And what else does he do? Call those things which be not as though they were. He was talking about Abraham and Sarah. The first thing he would have to do is quicken, Sarah, scrape Sarah's womb. Sarah, uh, she was an old woman, never had a child. Abraham was 10 years older. He couldn't even make a child. But he promised that Abraham was already a father of nations before any child was ever born. He spoke those things that were not as though they were already. He became a father of nations more than the sands of, of the sea. He spoke that into existence. You can't do that. There's no way in the world. If you can sp speak those things that are not as though they were, let me ask you a question. What happened to faith? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You would need God if you could do all that. I just speak it. Wouldn't be no banks on the face of this earth. Cause you, your, your, your pocketbooks and your pockets will be full. Just speak it. It doesn't make common sense. He was talking about faith. The faith of Abraham. Abraham became the father of nations. He called a man that was a Gentile from Ur of the Chaldees. Ur became Babylon, became Persia, became Iran. You know, the, the, he came from the same place that the Antichrist is going to come as a Gentile. But God made a nation of him. He became a Jew. When, he, when, he, when the Eber was born, that's where the Hebrew nation of the Jewish nation came from. He spoke that into existence before it ever happened. He spoke those things that were not as though they were. Abraham made all of that happen when he and Sarah came together. And he became the father of many nations, not, not just uh, uh, his son Jacob, uh, no, Isaac, but also through Ishmael. The first kings and princes were, were through Ishmael. That's, that's where you, you get the Assyrians and, and, and so forth that, that's fighting Israel. Israel and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, wasn't they Ishmael have been fighting all along and they're going to continue to fight. But he also, the 12 tribes of Israel, um, they became king. They, they were all because of one man. Abraham, all of them came into existence and Abraham became the father of many nations because God cleaned Sarah's womb. He, 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 he fixed uh, Abraham so he, uh, they didn't have Viagra in those days. So God became the Viagra. They came together and they had a child from which many nations came, including Jesus Christ. Do you understand? He spoke those things that were, are not as though they were. Now, I want you to put this on, on the screen. God inhabits the praises of who? Somebody put it up there. Don't, don't worry about being wrong because you probably will be. 
God inhabits the praises of who? Be careful. His people? Okay. Let's go to Psalms 22 and 3. Because that's what we've been saying. God inhabits the praises of his people. Mm hmm. What does Psalms 22 and 3 say? I know what we've been saying. God inhabits the praises of his people. What does Psalms 22 and 3 say? But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of of Israel. Some of these Tesla meetings. Oh God it has the praises of his people. Hallelujah. He come on a Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, and everything else. Israel. Not us. We have been grafted in. Yes, he inhabits our praises. But it was about Israel and nobody else. They started it. Now. Uh, <laughs> this thing, is, is it's going to get worse before it gets better, y'all. It's, it's, it's going to get worse. Uh, why do y'all call me Reverend? Why? Why? Somebody please go to Psalms 111 and 9. Are you there? Psalms 111 and 9. That rascal done got, done took my nose, so I'm, I'm going to have to wing it. What are Psalms... Uh, who's the reverend? Who's the reverend? Somebody put something up on the screen, please. Who's the reverend? I, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going another further till somebody does something. Who's the reverend? Thank you, Sister Foss. Somebody, somebody did it. See, somebody's been listening to my teaching. No, no man on the face of this earth is a reverend. Nobody. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you. What does Psalms 1, 11, and 9 say, y'all? I'm glad since she... Okay, one eleven and nine. Who sends redemption unto his people? The preacher? Oh no, okay. Who has commanded his covenant forever? Holy and reverend is his name. We're talking about God himself. And I don't want, I'm not going to go into detail what uh, Reverend means, but I don't want none of you calling me awesome. Reverend means awesome. Please don't call me awesome. Reverend means awesome. Only two. The. Awesome. The rep, he bought redemption. I can't bring redemption. But some folk will get so upset if you don't call them Reverend this and Reverend that. There are no Reverends. There's only one. Psalms 111 and 9. Read it. Read it. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. I've lost some notes, so I'm, I'm going to have to wing it because me and the devil had a tussle. But I won. 
Me and the devil were having a tussle. But I won. Me and the devil, we don't agree. I hate the devil. And I know he hates me. Me and the devil had a tussle. But I won. Now, uh, I don't have the scriptures, but I'm going to have to wing it. I'm going to have to wing it. Where did y'all get this stuff? Spare the rod, spoil the child from. I don't, I don't have the scripture. Look, look it up when we leave. Look it up for yourself. Spare the rod, spoil the child. There's no such scripture. It's, you will not find it anywhere. What it does say is that he that spareth the rod hates, hates his son. It has nothing to do with children. It has nothing to do with boys and girls. He that spareth the rod hates his son. Now, I don't have the scripture, but it's talking about the fact that God the Father, it pleased him to bruise his son. It pleased him. Because why was he wounded? For our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed of these sins. It pleased the Lord to bruise his son. He that spared the right, if he hadn't done that, he, it would be hatred, about dislike of his own son. It's not just mentioned about children. Spare the rod, spoil the child. No. He, Randy, if, if you got a, a concordance, would you find that for me? He that spared the rod hates his son. Hates his own son. Are you hearing me? Now, uh, I got another one. Okay. This, this wrestler done took my note. That's all right. I'm glad he did. Uh, how many of you have said pride comes before, go up before a fall? It's no, nowhere in, script, in Scripture. Look at that, Brandon. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride doesn't come anywhere. It goes. Pride goeth before destruction comes. And a haughty spirit before a fall. <laughs> Where are we getting this stuff from? Uh, okay, I got another one. Baptist churches. I haven't been to heaven, but I've been told, rock me and make me clean. The streets are pearl and the gates are gold and the biggest lie you ever told. What are the gold? The gold is the streets, not the gates. The gates are pearl. But we will sing that stuff and get happy on it and Carry that song out for 15 and 20 minutes. Just happy as hell. Because that's all it is. Full of hell. Uh, thank you, Randy. What, what, what scripture is that? Put, put, the, put that uh, Proverbs up there. He that spared his rod hates his son, but he that loves him chastens him. him be, he, ch you see, do I see chasing on that, Randy? Do I see chasing? He was wounded for our transgressions. Bruce Ryan Nixon, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. I told you it has nothing to do with children. It has all to do with Christ and nothing and nothing else. It has to do with Christ. And <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of walking in on these lumber yards. By that I mean folk come to church when they get good and ready, if they come at all. If they come at all. And you say, well, the Lord says, 
where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be in the midst. He was not talking about that. He wasn't talking about lazy folk. He was talking about when these folk in the church just grew up and want to do what they want to do and don't apologize as raising hell in the church. I'm going to go to that individual and tell that brother you have sinned, you need to stop it. And he's going to tell me where to go, when to go, how to go, and what I can do after I get there. Then I'm going to go and grab you, Sister Juanita. And I'm going to go and talk to him again. And he tells both of us that we can go, okay, so me and you are going to leave. And in the 18th chapter of Matthew, it says, tell it to the church. Tell it to the church. The church is going to have a meeting on this individual in the 18th chapter of Matthew. And if he doesn't repent at that time, you show him the door. He's, he's just like one of, the, one of the publicans. And the Lord says, what the, when you do this, I'm, I'm here watching over you. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst. I will put my sanction on what you just did. It will be as though I did it. Where two or three are gathered together, it has nothing to do with, with, a, with a, what, what I call a, a two or three, three show-ups at prayer meetings and Bible studies. It has to do with discipline in the church. Read it for yourself in the 18th chapter of Matthew. Now, okay, okay, I got it, Proverbs, it, uh, Randy, I think it was, was it Proverbs uh, 13, 24, but, but uh, he that spared the rod, hates the son, I think, I think that was it, and, uh, and, is, is he, is he the Proverbs 16 and 18 for, for pride, and it's Proverbs, uh, 13 and 24 for, I don't know, thir I think it's 13 and 24 about the, he that spared the rod, hated the son. Uh, I see a young man on now, he's preaching to himself. Uh, Randy, uh, Kenneth Carter was a, was a, a young man at, at the church I grew up in, in St. Paul United Holy Church. I got a little of that in me too. Now, <laughs> Please go to Genesis 12 and 3, because this is a good one. This is a good one. No, 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 stop. Hold up. Bef I want you to go to 1 John 4 and 1. But before you do, I want to tell you what you've been saying it says. You've been saying, try the Spirit by the Spirit. It says nothing like that. There's nothing in the Bible like that. 1 John 4 and 1 does not say, try the Spirit by the Spirit. What does it say? What does it say? Well, once again, I'm glad you asked. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, it doesn't say try the spirit by the spirit, but, but try the spirits, plural, whether they, plural, are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Okay, try the spirits. There are only two that he's talking about. If you read your Bible and go down to verse 6, he would tell you exactly what he was talking about. No try the spirit by the spirit. What he says in verse 6, we are of God, he that knoweth God hears us. He that is not of God heareth hear not, not us. Hereby know we the two spirits. And what are they? The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That's all chapter, the verse 1 is talking about. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, plural. You see those two plural spirits. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Where, how can a sp spirit try himself? Try the spirit by the spirit. I want you to think about what you've just been saying. You are seeing 
what is right and what is wrong. You weigh that thing. Is this of God or is this, or is this of Satan? Is this of Satan or is this of God? Spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Would you please get that out of your brain? Okay? There's no try the spirit. And, and now go to Genesis 12 and 3. And be, be truthful. I, I, I don't want you to put it on the screen. But he says, bless them that bless you. I will bless them that bless you and, and, and curse what? Curse them that curse you? Really? That's what you've been saying? What does Genesis 12 and 3 really say? I got to get up. Oh, I got to get off here. Genesis 12 and 3. And keep in mind, he was talking to Abraham, but, but, but what did he tell Abraham? The first thing he told them that, 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 that in verse uh, 2, that he would make of, of him a great nation. I will bless you and, and make your name great, and you should be a blessing. But what does he say in, in, bless, in, in verse 3? Not I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. He says, I will bless them that bless you and curse him. Underline the word him that curse thee. Because it's talking about the future Antichrist, the works of the devil. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you. Anybody that, that, that curse Abraham was of the devil. Was of the devil. And he has promised that to you and me spiritually. He will bless them that bless us. And as a child of God, he will curse them that curse us. It's not bless, I will bless them that bless you and curse Curse them to curse you. It's just one individual that will be cursed. He's talking about the Antichrist. And that, that happened to, to the king. That Sarah was a good-looking old woman, evidently. And, and, and uh, Abraham knew she was a good-looking woman. And when that, that king, when they left, when that king won't tell, tell, tell her, he, he wanted Sarah and said, Who is this woman? Uh, uh, that's my sister. You know how we, that's my sister. Okay, but he happened to be looking out the window, and no, you nobody treats their sister like that. You know, lovey dovey. Come on, and that man said, "Wait a minute, I thought you said that was your sister." And no, that's your wife. If I had taken that woman and and, and we had committed adultery. A curse would have been upon me. Yes, it would. I will bless them that bless you. I will curse him that cursed you. And that that man had to bless Abraham uh, when he left there with, with, with more, than he, more than he came with. Blessings and cursings. Oh, am I helping y'all? There are things that we have been saying and even get a little shout in. <laughs> get a little shout in, in a minute. And, and it's not even the Bible. It's not even the Bible. We're, we're, going, we're going to uh, talk next week. We're going to con concentrate on, on prayer. Because you, you're going to find out. I've, I've talked this before, but it's going to be in more detail next Wednesday. We're going to... Uh, See why our prayers are not heard. You just can't. You just ain't gonna walk into the presence of God like He's gonna answer you. That that there are things that there are things that you're going to have to do before you even can even talk to Him. And the first thing you've got to come in the name of Jesus, not the name Jesus. And we're gonna talk about that too, because we don't know His name. And I'll leave you with this: When Jesus led captivity captive. Those that were in the grave, he presented them to the Father. And at that, at that time, God gave him a name which is above every name. And get what I'm saying? 
at the name of Jesus, not the name Jesus. Because Gabriel gave Jesus the earthly name. But God gave him a name that we don't even know yet. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. It's just like a passcode. No man comes to the Father but by me. You just don't walk, you know, walk in and pray and say, God, here I am. He says, so, uh, what's the password? In the name of Jesus. No man comes to the Father but by me. And when you pray in the name of Jesus, you will find out that you're praying in a, in a name that is above every name. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. It did not say at the name Jesus. Kirk Franklin, I totally disagree with you. Something about the name Jesus. Something There were, there were people named Jesus before he got here to the earth. There was one named Bar Jesus. Bar means son of. So if his name was Bar Jesus, his daddy's name was Jesus. He was Jesus Jr. I know, I'm not being disrespectful. Simon Bar Jonah, son of Jonah. Bar Jesus is son of Jesus. And actually, uh, Barabbas' daddy, daddy was named uh, father, Abbas. He, he was the son of the father. What I'm saying, when we pray, and I'm, we're going to talk about prayer big time next week. You've got to pray in the name of Jesus to even contact God. You just don't approach him. You, you can't even go to the president of a bank without going through the secretary. And you think you're just going to walk into No. No. Ain't going to happen. I know my prayers are heard because I know how to pray in the name of. Father God, just again, I come before you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of teaching your people. Father, I, I, I make no claims. I make no claims on being a, a scholar or theologian, but I but I have obeyed your word in Jesus' name to study, to show myself approved unto you, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I pray that everything that I've done today will be, has been divided, has been the word of truth. And, and these people that have listened to me today can present it to others and make disciples. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope to see you guys Friday at 6. We're going to bring some things out <laughs> about Adam, what he started, Noah, Noah's son's wives. There were giants in Noah's day and even after Noah's day. They didn't just materialize. So be prepared at 6 o'clock Friday. And then Sunday at uh, 8 o'clock, we're going to talk about the third woe. God is dealing with the people. The wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. And, I'm, and as I present that to you, be thankful that you're not going to experience that. We have been called up to meet the Lord in the air in chapter 4 when the church is gone. None of these things will come upon you. But you need to learn what I'm teaching you so you can teach others that they that they're warned to flee from the wrath that is to come. God bless you, and heaven smile upon you.